Right, you know, I'm assuming, as uh, most punters have found out to their cost, you uh, still suffer bad losing runs. How do you deal with those sort of things mentally, and has your passion for gambling affected other areas of your life negatively or positively? Uh, well, actually, I'm having a bit of a losing run at the moment, uh, and it, it's still painful. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's generally a pain having a losing run in that, um, you, you know, when you have other people putting bets on for you and stuff, you have to keep sending money, transferring money back and forward. It's a pain. And obviously there is just the, you know, oh my God, I lost again. Um, there's always a feeling in this game. I don't think you can ever crack it. The game changes all the time. It gets harder. You know, I remember the stuff that I was doing, for example, with the exchanges in, uh, well, well, Betfair really, in 2006. Uh, I don't think I could do that anymore. I don't think it's possible. I think there's less liquidity there now, and that's definitely changed. The stuff I was doing in spread betting in the early days of that, that's definitely changed. I don't think I could go back to that. So you have to keep moving on uh, and find new angles and edges. Uh, I think at the moment I've got quite big edges on certain things in horse racing, but they're starting to erode and I feel like they're going to go, so I need to benefit from them now. Uh, in football, I think I've got an edge that will last quite a while, but uh, you know it's quite a small edge. and it means I have a lot of losing days uh, and it's very up, down, up, down and that can be quite wearing. I mean, you know, I had a I like I had a really good day a few days ago, uh, the best that I'd had for like three months on the football and then I followed it with the worst day I've had for like a month. So, you know, if you really allow yourself to be euphoric and depressed, I, I think it makes your life quite a lot harder. I think you have to be quite level-headed and you have to just kind of arch an eyebrow and say that's quite nice when you have a winning day and kind of turn down one corner of your mouth when you have a losing day. I think if you jump around the place and go crazy on the winning days, <clears throat> the, the come downs will be a bit too much. I, I think with, I mean, there, there are some positives when you're winning over a long period of time with losing runs because it, it does actually make it a bit easier to get on. I mean, with horses, uh, I've got, a few quite trusted people doing most of my business now and that right now they're saying to me oh it's brilliant you know like they get a cup of coffee when they pop in the shop and stuff uh and uh, there's a couple of accounts that we've got where uh they probably think we're, we're absolute mugs at the moment and hopefully uh uh you know they'll they'll be wondering about whether to send us a hamper at christmas uh when we win a win a, win a load back in the next two months in terms of my personal life and the way it's affected that, um, I, I, I mean, you know, it's a miracle really that anybody from uh, the opposite sex would uh, be at all interested in spending their life with some kind of deranged lunatic um, degenerate. Uh, but I, I, I was quite lucky to uh, um, go through a succession of complete nutcases uh, before I found one uh, complete loony woman who seems prepared to put up with me on a daily basis so I'm, I, I think that's quite good I think if you have a relationship uh, it can keep you level-headed she she doesn't really gamble she doesn't actually really like gambling very much um, I, I took her to the Arc de Triomphe a couple of years ago and uh, she took a book and uh, never really um, stopped reading it during any of the races uh, she liked the lunch and uh, you know that that was the main highlight we went racing uh, to Epsom and she took a book there as well and we only went because Blondie were playing afterwards and I think if Blondie weren't playing she would have said why the hell have you brought me here um, so she's basically has zero interest I mean I sometimes say to her this one's really big why don't you cheer the red one on the left and she'll be like well that one there and I'm like no that's purple and then they've already crossed the line by the time she's worked out which horse it is and she sort of says like i really don't want to be involved and yeah i did take her actually i've got a quick funny story uh i did get her to do um she's french and i got her to do a bet uh, she used to go in the shops for me years ago she didn't do that anymore if any shop managers are watching and worrying about french women in their shops it's not her um 
but uh, we, I did send her one day, uh, Paddy's were doing a thing on the Grand National, six places on the Grand National in the shops. And uh, they actually, they were a bit under the odds on every horse, so it wasn't really very good. But there was one horse that was quite fair to back each way. I didn't particularly fancy it that much, but it, it, was, it was a fair bet with the six places, and I thought it would probably uh, finish the course, so we might as well back it. Uh, and I sent her down the shop, and there was a quite a big paddies near where we used to live. And I sent her down there, and she'd never been in there before. And they had what, you know, what they call a floor walker on Grand National Day, a, a bloke who was wandering around looking for uh, total novices to explain to them how betting worked. And uh, he said, oh, you know, can I help you at all, madam? And she said, yes, I, I, I'm interested in the Grand National. And uh, actually, probably doesn't have that bad a French accent, but it was that kind of thing. And the guy said, uh, oh, yes, that, well, we have a special coupon to fill in. So she's like, oh, good, coupon, coupon. So, uh, so he said, well, which horse is it you want to back? And she said the name of the horse. I forget what it was called. And uh, he said, oh, OK. That's, uh, you know, no, he wasn't French. No, he said, oh, OK. Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, so this is this is where you put the name of the horse and you cross by the side of the horse. So just write it there. So she crossed it. And he said, well, um, would, you like, uh, would you like to take the price? So she said, uh, oh, yes, yes, I know about that. Yes, I want to take the price. So she takes the price 16 to 1. And he says, well, do you, do you want to have a win or each way? Now, he starts to explain then what each way is. She says, no, no, I think I know. I think I know each way is when we have two bets and one is to place. And he says, that's absolutely correct. Yes, so you tick that box there each way. And um, he says, uh, now we have to tick the box for the stake. And it can be from 25p each way and upwards so how much would you like and she says uh she reaches into her pocket and pulls out a wadge of 50s and says 600 pounds each way and uh he had to get a new coupon it didn't go up to 600 each way they laid the bet sadly and the horse was unplaced so it was a, it was a bad story really but uh i like to think that that was quite amusing for that fella at the end of the day <laughs>